In the endless reaches of the universe, there once existed a planet known as Krypton, a planet that burned like a green star in the distant heavens. There, civilization was far advanced and had brought forth a race of supermen whose mental and physical powers were developed to the absolute peak of human perfection. But there came a day when giant quakes threatened to destroy Krypton forever. One of the planet's leading scientists, sensing the approach of doom, placed his infant son in a small rocket ship and sent it hurtling in the direction of the Earth just as Krypton exploded. The rocket ship sped through star-studded space, landing safely on Earth with its precious burden, Krypton's sole survivor. A passing motorist found the uninjured child and took it to an orphanage. As the years went by and the crew to maturity, he found himself possessed of amazing physical powers. Faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings at a single bound, the infant of Krypton is now the man of steel, Superman! To best be in a position to use his amazing powers in a never-ending battle for true justice, Superman has assumed the skies of Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper. Kent, I want to see you. Just received another threatening note. Okay, Mr. White. Lois, another note from the mad scientist. Coming in, Chief. Now listen to this warning. He plans to strike tonight. Beware, you fools. My electrothanasia ray strikes tonight at 12. Total destruction will come to those who laughed at me and failed to heed my warnings. Beware, I strike at midnight. This nut may prove dangerous. Kent, you help Lois follow up her lead. She may have an angle on this thing. Yes, sir. But, Chief, I'd like the chance to crack the story on my own. Well, no. Thanks, Chief. But, Lois... Chief, don't you think that's a dangerous mission? for the
The deadly impact of his mysterious ray smashed the famous Tower Bridge, hurling cars and pedestrians into the river below. The police have warned everyone to remain in their homes. This looks like a job for Superman. That was a great scoop. Yes, Chief. Thanks to Superman. Up in the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound, this amazing stranger from the planet Krypton, the man of steel, Superman. Possessing remarkable physical strength, Superman fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice, disguised as a mild-mannered newspaper reporter, Clark Kent.
What do you think of the professor's show now? I still think it's pretty dangerous business. Hope nothing goes wrong. gentlemen, that the safety of the public is of special import to you. Perhaps almost as important to you as my ambitions are to me. But you request that I give up my experiments, experiments which are the combination of 30 years of dreaming and planning is impossible. Tonight, those dreams will become real. The comet of Falcon will be my toy. Under my control, it will be brought to within a mile of us. Then, after a close examination, I'll send it back again into space. Your tampering with nature endangers thousands of lives. Yes, and even at the possible cost of those lives, I shall continue my experiment. I warn you, Professor, we're prepared to stop you. And I warn you, sir, any interference may prove disastrous. Stop! <laughs> City editor. Look, Chief, the panic's on. The thing's gone haywire. Lois, Lois, what happened? Lois.
are wonderful. You're pretty wonderful yourself. Oh, how did you get here? <laughs> Thanks to Superman. reaches of the universe, there once existed a planet known as Krypton, a planet that burned like a green star in the distant heavens. There, civilization was far advanced and it brought forth a race of supermen whose mental and physical powers were developed to the absolute peak of human perfection. But there came a day when giant quakes threatened to destroy Krypton forever. One of the planet's leading scientists, sensing the approach of doom, placed his infant son in a small rocket ship and sent it hurtling in the direction of the Earth just as Krypton exploded. The rocket ship sped through star-studded space, landing safely on Earth with its precious burden, Krypton's sole survivor. A passing motorist found the uninjured child and took it to an orphanage. As the years went by and the grew to maturity, he found himself possessed of amazing physical powers. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. The infant of Krypton is now the man of steel. Superman! Possessing remarkable physical strength, Superman fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Disguised as a mild-mannered newspaper reporter, Clark Kent. effective yet devised, representing an investment in years. How'd you like to be making a test flight in this, Lois? Hmm, maybe I will. <laughs> Fine chance. Everyone off, please. Everyone off. Come on, Lois. That's us. Say, by the way, Lois. Lois.
nothing will interfere with voyage to Tokyo. Attention, all pilots. Giant bomber being stolen. Take off immediately. <laughs> well placed bomb will stop pursuit. This looks like a job for Superman. you are. Leave plane immediately or girl will be released. Okay, little man. You win. The Man of Steel, Superman. Possessing remarkable physical strength, Superman fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Disguised as a mild-mannered newspaper reporter, Clark Kent. Sorry, old fellow. Fine thing. Hey, 
Ace Newspaper Woman Scares Monkey. Mm. Ace Newspaper Woman Reviews Circus. What an assignment. Yeah, too bad, Lois. Looks like a great night for a murder or fire or something. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Just find up and get your cue, Lois. Now go to the start. Only a few minutes before the performance begins. So hurry, hurry, hurry.
She lords. Always gets her story. And luckily, she lived to write it. Thanks to Superman. when I'm finished with my work here. Uh, Captain, the submarine fleet commander is impatient for news of the American convoy. He will be advised of its location shortly. To your post, myself. Miss Lane. Yes? Here, take these important papers. Destroy them. Ah, American stubbornness. I give you just ten minutes to remember what you did with those papers, or I will be forced to brighten your memory with fire. So! So what? Does this get out? I suppose Miss Lane's plane has reached the convoy by this time, hasn't it? We're not soon, Mr. Kent. We're scheduled to meet the convoy ourselves in a few hours. That's fine. How's that, sir? I said that. <laughs> That's fine. I warned you, Fraulein. I'll let you talk. I will make no effort to interfere with these natives. Oh, cut the comic opera stuff. Very well, Nungala. Even now, if you tell me the location of the papers, I can... I have to look! Your Yankee friend is what you vain! <laughs> Hurry! Contact the Marine Fleet Commander at once! Yeah, well. Looks like they're having a party down there. And us not invited. How do you like that? What's that? It's Fleming ship. Empty. I wonder.
Dann macht alles und raus mit euch! You. Come in, base 3X. Come in, base 3X. The War Department goes on to say that during this action an entire fleet of Axis submarines was destroyed by American dive bombers affording the troop ships a safe crossing. For the mighty mission, praise the Lord, and pass the ammunition, and we'll all be... Up in the sky, look! It's a plane! It's a plane! It's Superman! than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to soar higher than any plane. This amazing stranger from the planet Krypton, the man of steel, Superman. Possessing remarkable physical strength, Superman fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Disguised as a mild-mannered newspaper reporter, Clark Kent. poisoning Dr. Jordan, yet you admit these fingerprints are yours. Yes, but, but you don't. That's all. Can't speaking. Hello, Daily Planet. This is Dr. Wilson of the Egyptian Museum. I've just uncovered something that may free Miss Hogan. Yes, Doctor. Uh, I, I've been feeling much better lately, but I'll be right over. I'll see you later, Lois. Doctor's orders. Doc. Dr. Jordan was the world's foremost student of hieroglyphics. Most of our priceless specimens were brought back by him, even the mummy of King Tush. Among his possessions, I uncovered this ancient Egyptian tablet and find it to be a secret curse of the tomb of King Tush. He who disturbs the eternal sleep of King Tush shall perish. This tablet may well be Miss Hogan's passport to freedom. Come with me, please. Three thousand years ago, the valley of the Upper Nile was ruled by an old and powerful king. He had been warring with the Lower Nile for many years, and just before the old king died, he called his son to him, the young boy of twelve. He commanded his giant guards to wear an oath of eternal allegiance to the boy prince to guard him constantly in this world and the next. Shortly after, the old king died. The youth of twelve now ruled the kingdom of ten million people. 
But the boy was not fashioned for such responsibility, and being of a sickly nature, soon became ill himself. Never was a person attended more faithfully than this youth, yet he withered away and soon died. True to their oath of allegiance, each of the royal guards drank poison so that they might continue to protect the spirit of their young king in the Valley of the Dead. Here in these catacombs, Dr. Jordan has reconstructed the burial vault exactly as he first discovered it in one of the pyramids. Working for years in absolute and frenzied secrecy, he finally duplicated an ancient mystic formula, which he called the fluid of life. Just before he was found dead, Dr. Jordan had inoculated each of the mummies of the giant guards. They were supposed to return to life, but somehow the test failed. Dr. Jordan was found here at the feet of King Tush. The rest you know. But what you don't know, Mr. Kent, and what I am equally certain of, is that Dr. Jordan violated the ancient warning by attempting to open the coffin of King Tush. A poisonous needle. That's how Dr. Jordan was killed. Yes, and Miss Hogan is a free woman. Who told you I was at the museum? My mummy done told me. Up in the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Good 
Give me a follow-up on this bullet car story. Attention. The destruction of your police station today was only a small demonstration of our power. Unless your mayor turns over the entire funds of the city treasury, power plants, firehouses, and all municipal buildings will be next. Take heed. This is your last warning. What are the authorities going to do about this, Mr. Mayor? We won't be intimidated by criminal threats. Law and order must and will prevail. Looks like a job for Superman.
Another great scoop for you. It was easy. Thanks to Superman.